Welcome to the committee. Please state your name Hi. and proceed to the testimony. Yep. My name is Joan Barron. I'm from Ramsey, Minnesota, and I'm a patient in the medical cannabis program. I appreciate everything that you're trying to accomplish with HF 766. It's close to addressing the high out-of-pocket costs we as patients have to pay, not to mention the low enrollment numbers. Right now, thousands of Minnesotans are being denied access due to the cost or they have been forced onto the illicit market in order to choose a safer alternative in the midst of the opiate epidemic. I have been living in intractable pain for 18 years. I was diagnosed at Mayo with having pudental nerve entrapment. The main motor and sensory nerve of my pelvis got entrapped between two supporting ligaments of the pelvis after a fall off my front step. The condition causes burning, searing, rectal, and vaginal pain along with deep buttocks pain. Mayo could only offer me three CT-guided nerve blocks in 2001. My only other course of treatment was flying to France to have decompression transposition surgery. I made four other trips for ketamine infusions and second opinions. I traveled off and on to San Francisco to see the president of the International Pelvic Pain Society and his women's health PT for two plus years. I have had L5-S1 fused. I have had numerous injections, too many to count. I've tried acupuncture, prolotherapy, chiropractor appointments, cranial sacral therapy, spinal catheters, all while being prescribed opiates, narcotics, anti-seizure medications, and depression meds. Within six months of my fall, I had a cupboard full of Oxycontin, several boxes of fentanyl patches, and everything in between. I kept all of our medications in the kitchen cupboard alongside the Tylenol and Advil. I hated taking them. I was not taking them as prescribed, nor was I counting my meds. I was never told to, not until I was placed in a pain clinic. That was about two years after my fall. I remember the doctors in France blown away by the fact I was even prescribed methadone. They only prescribed it for heroin addicts. I have two children. Katie, who was 20 at, at the time of my fall, and Adam, he was 16 the time of my fall. We started noticing changes in Adam's behavior, skipping school, not doing his homework. We busted him drinking with friends a couple of times. Some of the same stuff my husband and I did as kids. I thought it was just a phase. We took him to a doctor, we took him to a child psychologist, we put him on a low dose of antidepressants after the phase wouldn't pass. By the time I was enrolled into an accredited pain clinic, it was too late. By the time I realized I was supposed to be counting and keeping count of my meds, it was too late. By the time I realized my son had been sharing, stealing my meds, he had already gone to the streets of Minneapolis buying heroin. My child was a heroin addict, and I, his mother, was in chronic, intractable, chronic pelvic pain, who without those meds would have ended my life long ago. That's how bad this pain is. Over the course of 14 and a half years, I watched my son go from a smart, funny, kind young man to watching him go through detox after detox, rehab after rehab, overdose after overdose. We kicked him out, we brought him back in. We kicked him out, we brought him back in. We even pressed charges against him when he stole things from us, from bank checks to gold coins. We were told he needed to hit rock bottom, that that was the only way to make him stop. All it did was make matters worse for him and it made matters worse for us. On October 22nd, 21st, 2014, I picked up my son from the Elk River Jail. He had been locked up for 32 days on a probation violation at the time. We had Adam back in the house. He, was, he had contracted hepatitis C. He was having numerous seizures and had track marks up and down both arms. It was a beautiful fall day. The sky with the bluest blue. I fixed his favorite supper, threw my purse in the corner, hurriedly putting groceries away. He said he was exhausted and just wanted to go downstairs to sleep. He had been hospitalized during that time in jail. He had the longest seizure he'd ever had and was taken to Mercy Hospital in Coon Rapids. I can't even put into words 
What that one fall did to our family, the price we have paid was ultimate. My son never came back up those stairs. On October 22nd, 2014, my son died in our downstairs family room. He had taken two or three of my methadone and had injected it into his arm. He died from a methadone overdose, my methadone. I suffer from PTSD. To make matters worse, I have also developed obstructive defecation syndrome. I cannot take a ball movement without horrendous pain. Since entering the medical cannabis program, I have reduced my methadone from 80 milligrams three times a day to one 10 milligram tab. But I still need my breakthrough meds. Fortunately, I'm able to receive both. My pain clinic is working with me. The large majority of patients, they're not even allowed to do that. You have to choose one or the other. The high cost is hindering my ability to get off these medications that killed my son. Every day I have to look at the bottle of methadone knowing what it did to our family. It took my son from me forever. We can do better than this in Minnesota. Right now there are thousands of pills out there. What happened to our family has happened to other households and it's still happening. We are losing a generation to the opiate epidemic. Give us the right to choose a safer alternative and make that alternative affordable so that it's accessible and everyone in the state can choose a safer alternative. HF 766 does not go far enough in addressing the cost and accessibility of medical cannabis. The fewer opiates on the street means the less chance of having them fall into the wrong hands and die. That doesn't happen with medical cannabis, ever. My grandson is now the age that my son was. He's 15, and I don't worry. I, have, I had four safes in my house. It didn't matter. It just took that one time hurriedly putting my purse in a corner. I appreciate everything. Thank you.